we welcome you to the 2021 graduation ceremony of Asia Pacific Nazarene Theological Seminary. Today, we celebrate the accomplishments of students who for the last several years have worked hard to finish the task that they set out to do three, four, five, sometimes more years ago. We are particularly proud of this graduating class who have endured many trials on the path to graduation. They have proven themselves worthy of the degrees that we will soon confer upon them. This moment does not mark the end of a journey, but the beginning of a journey, a journey for those who have been called and are dedicating themselves to a life of service to the church and to the kingdom of God. The diplomas that you will receive today are not to separate you and to put you above others. They are to qualify you for service in the same humility that Christ showed to us by his incarnation. Thank you for all of the family and friends who have supported and encouraged your students through their time at APNTS. We know that the sacrifice that has led to this moment is not theirs alone. So let's join together and celebrate in this wonderful occasion. Dear friends at APNTS, I'm grateful for the ministry that this great school does, empowering followers of Jesus for his mission. The Church of the Nazarene is proud of you. Today, on behalf of the Board of General Superintendents, I greet everyone leading and everyone who has joined the celebration as a way of showing their support and gratitude. Our special greetings, however, go to the ones graduating today. You have done your best to reach the desire of your hearts in terms of preparation for ministry. Congratulations on the achievement. The church and the world are waiting for you. There is never excess of workers for the master's field. You have noticed how the world is changing so rapidly. Unfortunately, the changes are not always for better. Changes are increasing the work that you and I have been called to do. Do not be discouraged, however, because the one who called you has a plan to empower you for the task that is ahead. Remember that he is holy and he wants you to be holy. If you preach and teach Jesus, there is no way you can go wrong. Preserve the learning attitude, just like the psalmist did, as he said in Psalm 119.66, teach me good discernment and knowledge, for I believe in your commandments. Listen to him. You have been taught a lot about how to say what you and others believe people need to hear. You have been taught to also say what you think even God needs to hear from you in prayers. All of that is good, but even better, listen to him. Congratulations again. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Asia Graduate School of Theology Philippines, Program Directors and Deans of the eight consortium seminaries, I want to congratulate you for having completed your studies with Asia Pacific Nazarene Theological Seminary in AGST Philippines. We live in turbulent times. Uncertainties are before us. But just like two natural elements in the world, water and wind, they are unstoppable. And today, we need water symbolizing the Holy Spirit, and the wind also symbolizing the Holy Spirit to propel us in the work that is before us. May the Lord give us the creativity that he has given us and enable us to adapt in these new realities that we're facing. And a reliance on the Holy Spirit is crucial for us to be able to serve in these uncertain times. And so, Again, congratulations and welcome to the AGST Philippines alumni body, which is composed of about 200 alumni scattered all over the world, serving in various capacities of leadership and servanthood. Congratulations and God bless you. Greetings to you all in the powerful and majestic name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
We gather today to acknowledge amazing achievements in the midst of these challenging circumstances, don't we? However, the fact that we can gather in whatever form and the fact that we can celebrate achievements of these students and faculty is evidence enough of God's sustaining grace. Well done to each of you. In our congratulations of these whom we celebrate today, we also offer our heartfelt thanks to God for sustaining grace in the midst of these challenging times. Some didn't think they could make it, but they did. Some thought that it was a bridge too far, but it wasn't. Not with God on our side. Let's pray. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we gather today and say thank you for your grace and love that has reached even us. I thank you, Father, for APNTS and its various ministries. I thank you for the ministry of faithful faculty and staff, for diligent students, and for the incredible opportunity to learn and deepen in our love for you and others. I thank you for guiding and directing this school through a positive leadership transition and for leaders of vision and attentiveness to your spirit and to uh, that you have given this school. Bless us now with a special sense of your faithful presence. It is to your honour and glory that we address our praise and thankfulness. It is your life transforming work in our lives that we desire more than anything. We commit this time to you and make it an offering of praise to you and you alone. Bless us, we humbly pray, in the name of our Saviour, Lord Jesus, the Christ and coming King. Amen and Amen. Blessed Charity Ong from MACC program. When I started my APNTS journey way back 2015, when I graduated from college, I have lots of apprehensions and doubts about my abilities and my readiness for creative ministry and leadership. During that time, I can see myself as a canvas of an outlined artwork, not yet filled out with hues and colors. I know and I believe that God has put a desire on me to pursue further education at the seminary to bless my home church and ministry with what He has put in my hands, the knowledge in multimedia design and the passion for, this, for serving the Lord. But I also know that there's a hunger for deeper truths and biblical foundation in my being that needed to be met. And so God has me to study at APNTS and the institution has helped me 
develop my spiritual formation as an individual, and I have learned from a theological perspective to the practical application of these principles to the real life side of ministry. And it is also in my time in AP and TS that I've discerned what God has started in my life and continuously being fulfilled up to now, which is going on an in-depth experience of creative communication for church as manifested in my production study on branding for community churches. Another blessing of being part of AP and TS is the exposure to a Christian community I get to know people who are so passionate and dedicated to their calling and they are so selfless in creating an impact on the community. I believe this is one of the best and life-changing experiences in the seminary when the knowledge becomes a real thing and a real person, a real occurrence, and didn't just stay in the book and theories. Today the scripture reading is from Acts chapter 5 verses 27 through 32. The apostles were brought in and made to appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said. You have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the other apostles replied, We must obey God rather than human beings. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging him on a cross. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior, that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. Thanks be to God. It is a great honor for me to introduce our speaker for today's commencement exercises. Bishop Ephraim Tendero serves as global ambassador of the World Evangelical Alliance, or WEA. He was appointed to this position after completion of his illustrious service as its Secretary General and CEO. The WEA was founded in 1846 and is now a global ministry representing 140 countries with 600 million constituents. For 22 years, Bishop Tendero served as National Director of the Philippine Council of Evangelical Churches, or PCEC, which helped grow from 7,000 to over 30,000 local churches. He was also president of the Philippine Relief and Disaster Services. He initiated a number of national interfaith dialogues on national issues like climate change, anti-human trafficking, clean and honest elections, peace process, and poverty alleviation. He actively represented the Philippines in several interfaith dialogues in Asia, Europe, and the United Nations. He has a Master of Divinity with focus on pastoral counseling from Trinity Evangelical Divinity School in Illinois and was listed in the 1989 Who's Who Among Students in American Colleges and Universities. He received two honorary Doctor of Divinity degrees from Asian Theological Seminary as well as from Phoebus College of Bible. He was also given the Doctor of Leadership degree from International Graduate School of Leadership. Brothers and sisters, our speaker of the hour, Bishop Ephraim Tendero. Congratulations to the graduates of the Asia-Pacific Nazarene Theological Seminary. It feels strange to have this virtual graduation. You miss the feel of marching the aisle and cheering with your friends and classmates as they receive diplomas and awards for some. This is probably the new normal that you will face for some time. However, this new normal gives you great opportunities for effective ministries. You may have limited physical contact, but have unlimited online possibilities for communications. It took just a few months for the COVID-19 virus to infect the whole world. The pandemic brought our entire planet to a halt. It closed down borders, drove economies into recession, caused fear and anxiety everywhere, and even shut down church buildings. But this pandemic 
also gave us opportunities, a Kairos moment to accelerate doing God's mission. Let me share with you the three ways on how we can do it. Let us display integral mission. Let us pursue polycentric mission. Let us mobilize more believers to engage in ministry. First, the COVID-19 crisis gives us the opportunity to display integral mission. In response to the pandemic, many evangelicals worldwide demonstrated love in action through our respective ministries while sharing the message of salvation in Christ. National evangelical alliances in every continent have acted in selfless and remarkably effective ways. Nations in the Caribbean directly partnered with their governments in efforts to reopen safely from lockdown. In Argentina, the government gave evangelicals the important task to manage the distribution of a million food packages. In Sierra Leone, national evangelical leaders disseminated health-related messages by radio and personally traveled to villages to teach proper sanitation. From Argentina to Jordan to Uzbekistan, one common theme has surfaced, the government's respect for evangelicals in their selfless service when their assistance is sought. This is true even in countries where Christians are a minority. Evangelicals are also known for showing mercy and giving comfort as we provided emergency assistance to millions around the world. We also help protect our communities from COVID-19 as we cooperated in the temporary suspension of normal worship gatherings. In this time of crisis, we see ourselves as partners in serving people, not as victims of the pandemic nor religious persecution. You can view these inspiring stories in the series of videos I have created and posted, and you can see this in the screen. The second way we can do is pursue polycentric missions. The pandemic closed down borders and limited people's movements, but the missionary work continued its global impact and hindered. In Acts 1 day, Jesus told his disciples that they would be his witnesses to the uttermost parts of the earth. Following Pentecost, the uttermost parts were initially forgotten as the mega church of Jerusalem instantly attracted thousands to become believers. But by Acts 8.1, persecution forced the church to scatter and to take the gospel to communities throughout Judea and Samaria. Although evangelicals generally did not encounter persecution because of COVID-19, the pandemic prompted us to spread the Lord's message of hope and comfort to dispel fear and anxiety in our communities and beyond. In joining the world's massive shift to online communication and platforms, churches and ministries have reached far more people than they had previously been doing in personal and face-to-face -face interaction. Global organizations like the World Evangelical Alliance had made a similar shift from travel to electronic connectivity. By being online, we have literally pursued the cause of missions from everywhere to everywhere. The third way we can seize the moment is we can mobilize more believers to engage in ministry. With the closure of church buildings, homes have become the ministry centers and houses of worship as families took part in online worship services together. Small groups transitioned their Bible studies online as well. In Acts chapter 2, 46, the Jerusalem believers had both large group meetings in the temple courts and small group meetings in homes. During this pandemic, churches can still provide preaching and inspiration through our electronic devices as a substitute for mass gatherings. But interpersonal connections, body life, and pastoral care can only happen in small groups. We are rediscovering that our homes can be churches and that spiritual transformation happens best in intimate, personal settings. We have seen ordinary believers engaging in ministry within the confines of their own homes. Now, why do we do all of this? The Apostle Peter shared three reasons in Acts 5 verses 27 to 32. The first reason why we share the gospel and why we do ministry 
is to obey the executive order of the Father, verses 27 to 29. The Sanhedrin, the Jewish Supreme Court, gave strict orders not to teach about Jesus. But what have they done? The apostles continued preaching and they filled Jerusalem with their teaching. When the Sanhedrin confronted them, Peter gave them the reason why they continued doing so. They said, we must obey God rather than man. When we proclaim the gospel, we obey God. And no other authority is higher than the king of the universe. I asked a pastor friend of mine from Malaysia, when that country made conversion as a crime, I asked, what do you do now? You can be in prison for proclaiming the gospel and sharing the good news. He replied, the law of God is higher than the law of the land. Graduates, in many countries where you come from, there is no law that prohibits Christians to evangelize. It is their own neglect, their fear, and unwillingness that hinders them. But there is that executive order of the Father that demands our obedience. The second reason why we do ministry and proclaim the gospel is to present the exclusive offer of the Son, verse 30 to 31. Apostle Peter said, forgiveness of sins is found only in Jesus. Why such exclusiveness? Verse 30 and 31 tells us, because of who he is. He is the Prince and Savior. And for what he did, he died for our sins and was raised from the dead. And in contrast with all other religious leaders, no one comes close in comparison with Jesus because of three reasons. First reason, Jesus claimed he is God. Buddha, Confucius, Muhammad, Baha'u'llah, Joseph Smith, Manalo, and many others, they never claimed to be divine. But Jesus said, I and the Father are one. That he who has seen me has seen the Father. Jesus claimed he is God. The second reason why he is unique is because he is the one who gave his life as a sacrifice for sins. Many other religious leaders died, but never as a substitute for anybody. Only Jesus gave himself on the cross for his atonement for our sin. And the third reason, in order to prove that his claim to be God is true and to show that his death is effective, Jesus rose again from the dead. Buddha died and he's still dead. Confucius died and he is still dead. All others, they died and they're still dead. But Jesus Christ died and after three days, he rose again from the dead. He rose victoriously from the dead and reigns forevermore. Therefore, Hebrews 7.25 tells us that he is able to save completely those who come to God through him. Why? Because he always lives to intercede for them. If Jesus is the only way, we are then selfish or cruel when we don't share the exclusive offer of the Son. Let us proclaim and share this message. The third reason why we do proclaim the message is to experience the explosive power of the Holy Spirit. Verse 32, we are witnesses of these things and so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey Him. What is the indicator that a person is filled by the Holy Spirit? There are many other indicators, but Jesus himself said in Acts 1.8, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. What we see here is the cause and effect relationship. The cause, the Holy Spirit comes on you. And what is the effect? You will be my witnesses. I remember Dwight L. Moody. He was used by God mightily in the revivals in Chicago and founded the Moody Bible Institute that is still in the heartland of Chicago. What was the secret why he had a powerful and meaningful, successful ministry? Many people ask, does God work alone through him? Does he have the monopoly of the Holy Spirit? The answer that was given by people who are close to him was, he does not have the monopoly of the Holy Spirit and he does not have the monopoly of the work of God. But the Holy Spirit has monopoly over his life. 
brothers and sisters, it's important to allow the Holy Spirit to take full control of your life. Allow Him to have monopoly over your life. Graduates, COVID-19 has greatly affected and altered our lives and institutions. We suddenly found ourselves unprepared for the future. In fact, coping with the present is already incredibly difficult for us. We are living at a time of widespread fear and uncertainty. In the face of these realities, the words of the Apostle Paul in Ephesians 5, 15 and 16 ring true. Pay careful attention then how you walk, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. As followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we Christians are not spared from hardship caused by COVID-19. However, we can rise above our circumstances and make the most of the time. Graduates, view this pandemic as a Kairos moment, an opportune time for you to proclaim the truth about our Lord Jesus Christ and His unconditional love for the world. Look beyond the threats of COVID-19 and open your eyes to the opportunities this crisis brings. Make the most of your time to connect with people around you. Pray for them, encourage them, and serve them with love and compassion. We do this to obey the executive order of the Father, to proclaim the exclusive offer of the Son, and to experience the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Graduates, consider this. The COVID-19 pandemic could very well be a defining moment for you to launch an effective and successful ministry. Do your mission in advancing the good news of Jesus Christ and bringing about personal and community transformation for the glory of God. Congratulations and God richly bless you. Amen. There is a candle in every soul, some brightly burning, some dark and cold. There is a spirit who brings a fire, ignites a candle and makes his home carry your candle run to the darkness seek out the hopeless confused and torn hold out your candle for all to see Light up the 
Hi, I'm Nehemiah Batula from India. I'm a graduate of PhD in Holistic Child Development. It is my great privilege and honor to speak before the community of APNDS, President, Professors, Parents, Relatives, Pastors, Well-wishers and other distinguished guests who are attending this auspicious event through FB Livestream. Let me begin with this statement. The community of APNDS has become a means of grace throughout my studies and stay at APNDS. Right from my PhD enrollment in 2015, up until now, the community of APNTS walked with me by showing love, compassion, kindness, and providing needed guidance and assistance in every aspect of my life. Beside my home, APNTS has been my second home, where I could express my freedom, feelings, concerns, and experience a sense of belonging. It is a family and also a community of faith which binds us together for a greater purpose. I would say that the faculty of APNDS and Asia Graduate School of Theology played a tremendous role in terms of cultivating a deeper spirituality and relationship with God and people across the globe through their teachings, spiritual retreats, and exposing to the ministry fields. The classroom was an important place where I enjoyed learning from the professors and classmates. The class presentations, debates, projects, and reflections helped me to open myself to more ideas and brought me to a state of continuous learning. The coursework helped me to see the understanding of God's heart for children, especially at risk and underprivileged children. This prepared me to share what I learned with pastors, students, and community leaders. Moreover, practicum has developed me to see the necessity of children's ministries, especially ministries among the vulnerable population in the community. Along with this, it helped me to gain skills such as developing curriculum for vocational Bible school, creating discipleship programs, encouraging children to be a part of church service, etc. My research study in the area of child sex trafficking helped me to understand the dynamics of trafficking, the roles of community and churches toward combating modern-day slavery, ways to tighten the policies, and the need for a constant walk with survivors of abuse. Dr. Brinta Nicholas journeyed with me in my research study and provided such important, valuable feedback to my dissertation. Throughout my PhD studies at APNTS, particularly, there is a passage in the Bible, which is Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19, the Nazareth Manifesto, which compelled and motivated me to engage in the ministries to, for, and with children at risk, especially survivors of trafficking in my hometown Rajamandri in India. APNTS has given me opportunities to be involved in the research project for Luzon Philippines Forum for Children. I had the privilege of working with Dr. Nativity Ptalia, Dr. Floyd Cunningham, Dr. Catherine Stonehouse, and Dr. Menchit Wang, who have a passion for ministering to at-risk children and creating child-friendly churches and communities. During my studies, the seminary has provided numerous opportunities to teach to the students as guest lecturer. I am grateful to them for this amazing experience. 
Moreover, the seminary and the program director of holistic child development, Dr. Nativity Ptalia, provided the academic scholarship and raised funds for my studies and stay at APNDS. In other words, the family of APNDS offered me holistic care. To conclude my testimony, APNDS has equipped and empowered me as a research practitioner and an advocate on behalf of children, especially sexually exploited children. It trained me to lead projects that cater for the well-being of marginalized and underprivileged children. The education that I received from APNDS helped me to be a resource speaker and facilitator in the area of anti-human trafficking for various academic institutions and faith-based organizations in Asia-Pacific, South Asia and West. At this moment, I am serving as an adjunct professor and assistant to the president and academic dean at APNDS. Once again, a big thank you on behalf of the graduates for giving us such a wonderful opportunity to express how grateful we are to the family of APNDS. We love you. We thank our parents, relatives, pastors, friends and well-wishers for your prayers and assistance during our studies at APNDS. Thank you. Good morning. The 36 prospective graduates of 2021 include nine from the Philippines, nine from Myanmar, seven from South Korea, three from the United States, two each from India and Japan, and one each from Peru, Nicaragua, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. 17 of the 35 are Nazarene, five are Baptists, four are Free Methodists, and there are three each from the Presbyterian and Wesleyan churches and one each from the Believer's Church, the Korean Holiness Church, the Korean Evangelical Holiness Church, and the Full Gospel Church. There is one candidate for the Doctor of Philosophy in Holistic Child Development, and one candidate for the Doctor of Philosophy in Transformational Learning. We have our first candidate for the degree Doctor of Ministry. 19 are candidates for Master of Divinity. Three are candidates for Master of Arts in Religious Education. There are two candidates for Master of Science in Theology in Pastoral Ministry, and two candidates for Master of Arts in Christian Communication. We have our first candidate for the Master of Arts in Intercultural Studies. Two are candidates for the Master of Ministry, three students have earned the graduate certificate. President Bollinger, three students have completed all requirements for the graduate certificate in intercultural studies. Upon the recommendation of the faculty, I take pleasure in presenting them to you as candidates for their certificates. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Asia Pacific Nazarene Theological Seminary, I hereby confer upon you the graduate certificate in intercultural studies with all rights, privileges, responsibilities, and honors that pertain to it. Angelina Jones, Graduate Certificate in Intercultural Studies. Ms. Jones is a member of the Church of the Nazarene and is from the United States. She received her Bachelor of Arts in History from Olivet Nazarene University. She will be serving the Church of the Nazarene in Southeast Asia. Jeremy Page, Graduate Certificate in Intercultural Studies. Reverend Page is an ordained elder of the Church of the Nazarene and is from the United States. He received his Bachelor of Science in Multidisciplinary Studies, majoring in Theology and Psychology from Liberty University. He and his wife Lynette will serve the Church of the Nazarene in a creative access area. They have three sons, Jordan, Jacob, and Luke. Lynette Page, Graduate Certificate in Intercultural Studies. Mrs. Page is a member of the Church of the Nazarene and is from the United States. She received her Bachelor of Science in Psychology from Liberty University. She and her husband, Jeremy, will be serving with the Church of the Nazarene in a creative access area. President Bollinger, two students have satisfactorily completed all requirements leading to the degree Master of Science in Theology. 
Upon the recommendation of the faculty, I take pleasure in presenting them to you for the conferring of this degree. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Asia Pacific Nazarene Theological Seminary, I hereby confer upon you the degree Master of Science in Theology with all the rights, privileges, responsibilities, and honors that pertain to it. Genevieve Dingley, Master of Science in Theology with concentration in pastoral ministry. Reverend Genevieve Dingley is an ordained elder of the Wesleyan Church and is from the Philippines. She received her Bachelor of Religious Education from the Wesleyan Bible College. After graduation, she and her husband will be serving at the Wesleyan Bible College in Kabakan, North Katabato, Mindanao. Vilmar Dingley, Master of Science in Theology with concentration in pastoral ministry. Reverend Vilmar Dingley is an ordained elder of the Wesleyan Church and is from the Philippines. He received his Bachelor of Theology from the Wesleyan Bible College and has enjoyed many years of pastoral ministry and leadership in his church. After graduation, he and his wife, Reverend Genevieve Dingley, will be teaching at the Wesleyan Bible College in Kabakan, North Katabato. President Bollinger, two students have satisfactorily completed all requirements leading to the degree, Master of Ministry. Upon recommendation of the faculty, I take pleasure in presenting them to you for the conferring of this degree. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Asia Pacific Nazarene Theological Seminary, I hereby confer upon you the degree Master of Ministry with all rights, privileges, responsibilities, and honors that pertain to it. Emmanuel David Gill, Master of Ministry. Mr. Gill is from Lahore, Pakistan. He received his Bachelor of Arts from Punjab University. Currently, he is serving God, his family, and his people in Pakistan. Thangtha Kung Sinzapa, Master of Ministry. Mr. Thangtha Kung Sinzapa is from Chin State, Myanmar, and received his Bachelor of Theology from Emmanuel Theological Seminary and the Bachelor of Divinity from People's Baptist Bible College and Seminary in Kerala, India. He hopes to teach in his home country. President Bollinger, one student, has satisfactorily completed all requirements leading to the degree Master of Arts in Intercultural Studies. She is the first person at APNTS to earn this degree. Upon the recommendation of the faculty, I take pleasure in presenting her to you for the conferring of this degree. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Asia Pacific Nazarene Theological Seminary, I hereby confer upon you the degree Master of Arts in Intercultural Studies with all rights, privileges, responsibilities, and honors that pertain to it. Mora Del Carmen Narvaz Guido, Master of Arts, Intercultural Studies, magna cum laude. Ms. Narvaez is from Nicaragua and is a member of the Church of the Nazarene. She received her Bachelor of Civil Engineering from the Universidad Nacional de Ingeniera. She is seeking the Lord for his divine plans for her following her graduation. President Bollinger, three students have satisfactorily completed all requirements leading to the degree Master of Arts in Religious Education. Upon recommendation of the faculty, I take pleasure in presenting them to you for the conferring of this degree. By the power vested in me, by the Board of Trustees of Asia Pacific Nazarene Theological Seminary, I hereby confer upon you the degree Master of Arts in Religious Education with all the rights, privileges, responsibilities, and honors that pertain to it. Kong Nao, Master of Arts in Religious Education with concentration in holistic child development. Ms. Kong Nao is from Kachin State. 
Myanmar and is a member of the Baptist Church. She received her Bachelor of Arts in Music from Myanmar Institute of Theology. Her thesis title is Self-Assessment of Children Living in the Dumare Camp for Internally Displaced Persons on Their Well-Being Based on the Comprehensive Inventory of Thriving. Mary Seng Kam, Master of Arts in Religious Education with Concentration in Holistic Child Development. Ms. Mary Seng Kam is from Kachin State, Myanmar, and is a member of the Baptist Church. She received her Bachelor of Theology from Kachin Theological College and Seminary. Her thesis is entitled, The Impact of Rituals, Experiences, and Actions of the Environment in Kachin Orphanage Center upon the Faith Development of Selected Orphaned Children. Park Jung Yoon, Master of Arts in Religious Education with Concentration in Holistic Child Development. Ms. Park is from South Korea and is a member of the Presbyterian Church. She received a Bachelor of Arts and Laws from Mok Kwan University and a Master of Divinity from Daejeon Theological Seminary. Her thesis title is Growing Up with an Absent Father and How Selected Korean Adolescents Perceive God as Father. President Bollinger, two students have satisfactorily completed all requirements leading to the degree Master of Arts in Christian Communication. Upon recommendation of the faculty, I take pleasure in presenting them to you for the conferring of this degree. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Asia Pacific Nazarene Theological Seminary, I hereby confer upon you the degree Master of Arts in Christian Communication with all the rights, privileges, responsibilities, and honors that pertain to it. Blessed Charity Ong, Master of Arts in Christian Communication. Ms. Ong is from the Philippines and is a member of the Full Gospel Church. She received her Bachelor of Arts in Multimedia Arts from the Lyceum of the Philippines University. Her thesis title is Church Brand Book Development and Usage in Reign in Life Christian Ministries, Manila. She plans to be part of a thriving creative team in Singapore and pursue further education to help equip and train more people in media for the church. April Kenneth Baldo, Master of Arts in Christian Communication. Mrs. Baldo is from the Philippines and is a ministerial candidate of the Free Methodist Church. She received her Bachelor of Science in Psychology from Manila Central University. She and her husband, Master of Divinity candidate, Jemwell Baldo and their daughter, Hesed Liri, recently moved to a new pastoral assignment in San Miguel, Tarlac City. Her thesis is entitled, The Experiences of Selected Children in the Northern Philippine Conference of the Free Methodist Churches in light of their social media apps usage. President Bollinger, these students have satisfactorily completed all requirements leading to the degree Master of Divinity. Upon recommendation of the faculty, I take great pleasure in presenting them to you for the conferring of this degree. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Asia Pacific Nazarene Theological Seminary, I hereby confer upon you the Master of Divinity degree with all the rights, privileges, responsibilities, and honors that pertain to it. Jemwell Baldo, Master of Divinity Cum Laude. Pastor Baldo is from the Philippines and is a ministerial candidate of the Free Methodist Church. He received a Bachelor of Theology from Light and Life Bible College. While in their pastoral assignment in San Miguel, Tarlac City, he and his wife will continue to be part of the Set Free Movement, a faith-based organization of the Free Methodist Church that fights to end 
modern day slavery. Sin Kan Mang, Master of Divinity. Mr. Sin Kang Mang is from Chin State, Myanmar, and is a member of the Baptist Church. He received his Bachelor of Arts in English from Kalai University. He is currently enrolled in our Master of Science in Theology pastoral ministry program as he prepares to return to Myanmar. And he says, God is his everything. Isaiah. Evangelista, Master of Divinity, Magna Cum Laude. Mr. Evangelista is from the Philippines and is a member of the Free Methodist Church. He received his Bachelor of Theology from the Light and Life Bible College. He plans to help his denomination here in the Philippines. Kengoro Goto, Master of Divinity, Summa Cum Laude. Mr. Goto is from Japan and is a member of the Church of the Nazarene. He received his Bachelor of Theology from Tokyo Christian University. He is hoping to further his formal academic studies. Mototsugo Inaba, Master of Divinity, Magna Cum Laude. Reverend Mototsugo Inaba is from Japan and is an ordained elder of the Church of the Nazarene. He received his Bachelor of Economics from Nihon University College of Economics. He is married to Nana Inaba and they are blessed with two daughters, Mutsuki and Kai. He is presently undertaking the Master of Theology, specializing in Old Testament studies at the Nazarene Theological College in Brisbane, Australia. Kim J. Gun, Master of Divinity. Mr. Kim is from South Korea and is a member of the Hapdong Presbyterian Church. He received his Bachelor of Theology from the International Evangelical Holiness College. He is married to Ms. Lee Sunuk. Their children are named Kim Hak Young and Kim Yun Ching. He plans to continue to plant churches and Bible studies and undertake evangelism in Antipolo City. He mentions that he is thankful to APNTS. Kim Miji Yi, Master of Divinity Cum Laude. Mrs. Kim is from South Korea and is a member of the Church of the Nazarene. She received a Bachelor of Science in Secondary Education in English from the University of Santo Tomas. She is married to Master of Divinity candidate Kim Miru, who she met at APNTS. They have a daughter, Alethea Leha Kim. Kim Miru, Master of Divinity. Mr. Kim is from South Korea and is a member of the Church of the Nazarene. He received his Bachelor of Theology with a double major in Christian Education and Broadcasting and Digital Media from Korea Nazarene University. He is married to Master of Divinity candidate Kim Mi Ji Ye, and they are the father of Alethea Leha Kim. They will be deployed as a family to Thailand as Nazarene missionaries. Lee Se Han. Master of Divinity. Mr. Lee is from South Korea and is a member of the Korean Holiness Church. He received his Bachelor of Theology in Missiology from Sung Kul University. He plans to undertake church ministry after graduation. Lee Yo Han, Master of Divinity. Mr. Lee is from South Korea and is a member of the Korean Evangelical Holiness Church. He received his Bachelor of Arts in Practical Business English from Wok Kwan University. He plans to undertake ministry after graduation. Evan Ray Makasa, Master of Divinity. Mr. Makasa is from the Philippines and is a member of the Church of the Nazarene. He received his Bachelor of Arts in Theology in Pastoral Ministry from Central Philippines Nazarene College. 
He plans to continue his pastoral call at Harvest Point Church of the Nazarene in Cebu City and will also be applying to be an Old Testament teacher in a Bible college or work in a Christian non-government organization. Christian Anthony Mangera, Master of Divinity, cum laude. Mr. Mangera is from the Philippines and is a member of the Church of the Nazarene. He received his Bachelor of Arts in Theology from Philippine Nazarene College. He plans to continue his full-time ministry in his local church, the First Church of the Nazarene in Angeles City, and he also plans to apply for PhD studies. Pao Khan Thong, Master of Divinity. Mr. Pao Khan Thong is from Chin State, Myanmar, and is a member of a Baptist church. He received his Bachelor of Science in Chemistry at the Kalai University. He is holding on to the verse, he says, from Isaiah 41.10. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Mano Ranjan Chandro Roy, Master of Divinity. Mr. Roy is from Bangladesh and is a member of the Church of the Nazarene. He received his Bachelor of Commerce in Accounting with honors and Master in, in Accounting from the National University of Bangladesh. He is married to APNTS alumna Nesita Baroy Jinta and they have a son, Abia Avroy, Avro Roy. They work with various ministries of the Church of the Nazarene in Bangladesh. Sun Chan Gi, Master of Divinity. Mr. Sun Chan Gi is from South Korea and is a member of the Dong Hop Presbyterian Church. He received his Bachelor of Engineering from Kwang Wong Woon University. He is married to Kim Jong Hee and they have two children, Sun Hyung Jun and Sun Yu Bin. After graduation, Sun Chan Gi will continue his missionary work here in the Philippines. He thanks God for enabling him to graduate and he says he is thankful for being able to study with excellent professors and good fellow students. He said that it was not easy so far, but it was a really good time. Thazin Huang, Master of Divinity. Reverend Thazin is an ordained elder of the Church of the Nazarene and served as a pastor in Kayin State, Myanmar. She received a Bachelor of Theology from Southeast Asia Nazarene Bible College and a Bachelor of Arts in History from Yangon University. After graduation, she plans to return to Myanmar to serve God and his kingdom. Van Lao Finga, Master of Divinity. Reverend Van Lao Finga is from Chin State, Myanmar and, and has been serving God as a pastor in Yangon as an ordained elder of the Church of the Nazarene. He received his Bachelor of Theology from Southeast Asia Nazarene Bible College, and he is married to Lal Nun Nanghaki, Nancy, and they have a daughter, Mary Kimi. After graduation, Van Lao Finga plans to pastor and disciple people in the Church of the Nazarene. He mentions that he was unable to finish his studies at APNTS because of the school's extension program in Myanmar and also its online Zoom classes this year. He will never forget the Honorary Methodist Church, which sponsored his studies. President Bollinger, this summer three students will complete 
the requirements for the degree Master of Divinity. Upon recommendation of the faculty, I take pleasure in presenting them to you as presumptive summer graduates. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Asia Pacific Nazarene Theological Seminary, upon the satisfactory completion of all requirements, you will be conferred the degree Master of Divinity. Byak Kung Lian, Master of Divinity. Mr. Byak Kung Lian is from Chin State, Myanmar, and is a member of the Believer's Church. He received his Bachelor of Theology from Judson Bible College. After graduation, he plans to pursue further studies and to teach. Kevin Jones Lumsod, Master of Divinity. Mr. Lumsud is from the Philippines and is a member of the Wesleyan Church. He received his Bachelor of Arts in Theology from the Philippine Wesleyan Bible College. After graduation, he plans to be assigned to a church in Mindanao and to spend, he says, all of his life in ministry to God. He mentions that it is a great success that finally his journey at APNTS will end. He says that he has enjoyed the adventure and that he will use his experiences and the wisdom that he has received for the glory of God. He thanks all the professors, classmates, staff, and others for taking good care of him. Sa Mudu. Mr. Sa Mudu from Kayin State, Myanmar, is a licensed minister of the Church of the Nazarene. He received his Bachelor of Theology from Southeast Asia Nazarene Bible College. After graduation, when possible, he will return to Myanmar to minister to the people of his country, both physically and spiritually. President Bollinger, this student has satisfactorily completed all requirements leading to the degree Doctor of Ministry in Transformational Ministry. He is the first person to receive this degree from APNTS. Upon the recommendation of the faculty, I take pleasure in presenting him to you for the conferring of this degree. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Asia Pacific Nazarene Theological Seminary, I hereby confer upon you the degree Doctor of Ministry with all the rights, privileges, responsibilities, and honors that pertain to it. Shirish Padmakar Ahali, Doctor of Ministry in Transformational Ministry. Reverend Ahali is an ordained elder of the Free Methodist Church and serves as Church Development Director of the Free Methodist Mission in India. He received his Bachelor of Arts from Osmania University and Master of Divinity from Union Biblical Seminary. He is married to Uwala, and they have a son, Abhishek, and a daughter, Karuna. His Doctor of Ministry project is entitled Church Planting in the City, a case study of using the CCP model in Mumbai, India. By the powers vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Asia Graduate School of Theology Philippines, I confer upon you the Doctor of Philosophy degree with all the rights, privileges, responsibilities, and honors pertaining to it. President Bollinger, in our partnership with Asia Graduate School of Theology Philippines, two students have satisfactorily completed all requirements leading to the degree Doctor of Philosophy. Upon recommendation of the faculty, I take pleasure in presenting them to you for the conferring of this degree. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Asia Pacific Nazarene Theological Seminary, I hereby confer upon you the Doctor of Philosophy degree with all the rights, privileges, responsibilities, and honors that pertain to it. Nehemia Bathula, Doctor of Philosophy, Concentration in Holistic Child 
development. Mr. Batula is from India and joined the Church of the Nazarene in the Philippines. He received his Bachelor of Commerce from Andhra University and his Master of Divinity and Master of Theology in Practical Theology, specializing in holistic child development from the New India Bible Seminary. His dissertation title is Photo Voice Empowerment of Females Rescued from Child Sex Trafficking in Raja Mahendra Varam, India, a Holistic Needs Analysis. He is currently serving in various capacities here at Asia Pacific Nazarene Theological Seminary. Ernesto, Sebastian, Lozano, Fernandez, Doctor of Philosophy, Concentration in Transformational Learning. Reverend Lozano is from Peru and is an ordained elder of the Church of the Nazarene. He received his Bachelor of Architecture from the private University of Chiclayo, his Bachelor of Theology from Seminario Theologico Nazareno, and his Master of Divinity from Asia Pacific Nazarene Theological Seminary. His dissertation title is Rafael Palma and Transformational Learning in the Philippines, Paradigm Shift from the Spanish to the Americans. Reverend Lozano writes, I dedicate this achievement to my father, who is not able to be with me physically, but his love and example remain. I dedicate to my family, mother, sisters, and my second family, and to the church in Peru. I acknowledge my APNTS professors and community that are my friends. You know who you are. Our Father, we thank you for our graduating students this year. We pray for blessings upon them. Bless them with love so that their hearts are enkindled to serve others. Bless them with patience so that they may be generous to those who err. Bless them with humility so that they may serve like Jesus Christ. Bless them with wisdom so that they make godly decisions each day. Bless them with compassion so that they feel as Christ felt for the needy. Bless them with strength so that they can lift others up. Bless them with articulation so that they may proclaim your name and deeds. Bless them with the discernment so that they know your will in all things. Bless them with zeal as they pursue the vision you give them. Bless them with victory when they face various challenges in life. Bless them with companions who will help them in the journey. Bless them with cynicism so that they don't accept the logic of the world. Bless them with a sorrowful spirit so they don't become blind to injustice. Bless them with pain to remind them to pursue their well-being. Bless them with critics who will remind them of their need for growth. Bless them with weaknesses that they would remain dependent on your grace. We commit them to you as they leave APNTS equipped to serve. May they be light and salt to the earth. May they be ministers of reconciliation. May they sanctify your name in a cloud of witnesses. May they run the race with perseverance. May they fight the good fight of faith. May they be sanctified through and through May they be perfected in love. May they please you throughout their life so that when their fight is over, they may receive their full reward. These things we pray as a community of faith in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
as we conclude these graduation exercises, allow me to express my deep appreciation to you for your perseverance. Congratulations for graduating. Congratulations for persevering in the midst of very, very challenging times. Thank you for your flexibility. Thank you for trusting your professors and the faculty and the staff to help you through these challenging days. It is because of the team at APNTS and your understanding that we have reached this day. I know that so much has gone into the uh, ongoing delivery of education during COVID-19. And I am sure that each of you are deeply appreciative of the faithfulness of the faculty in these times. I do also want to express my gratitude to the faculty and staff for the terrific work that you have done. I know that collectively students, faculty, staff, that there have been times of distress and dismay, times of real anguish as we've looked at the future and wonder if, if APNTS would even be able to have and sustain a student body again in residence. But thank God that we have been able to succeed and persevere. A lot has been written in, uh, in articles, in journals about how many people are languishing. They're not depressed. But COVID-19 has, has created a sense of blah in many people. There is a lack of direction, a lack of clarity, a, a lack of understanding purpose and destiny. And I want to encourage you today, those of you who are graduating, to persevere, to not give up. Remember whose you are. Remember where you came from. Remember who called you to APNTS, to prepare for a ministry, it is God. So I want to leave you with this passage of scripture from Psalm 24, verses 7 through 9. Lift up your heads, you gates, and be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates, and lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. As you move on from this graduation, as you pursue the call that God has placed upon your life, as you enter the ministry that He's calling you into, do not languish. Be Trusting in the Lord who is strong and mighty. While COVID continues to ravage the nation of the Philippines and the nations of the Asia Pacific region and the globe, our hope, our confidence is in Jesus. Let's lift our heads up to Him. Let's trust Him for the future. And let's walk by faith in the joy of our salvation that we might become true witnesses to the hope that we have thank you again for entrusting your education into APNTS and thank you faculty and staff for pouring your lives into that of our student body I look forward to seeing all of you in hopefully the not too distant future that we might celebrate together all that God has, is, and will continue to do through Asia Pacific Nazarene Theological Seminary as together we take hands and we build bridges into the cultures of the nations that the kingdom of God may be expanded and that Jesus may be glorified. I love you and appreciate you all. God bless you. Congratulations, graduates. 
let me bestow on you this Franciscan benediction. May God bless you with discomfort, discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships. Discomfort so that you will live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger, anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people. Anger so that you will work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears, tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, starvation, and war. Tears so that you will reach out to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. And may God bless you with foolishness, foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world, foolishness so that you will do what others claim cannot be done. And now, let us receive this benediction from Hebrews 13, 20 to 21. May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the ship, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. His divine power has given us everything, everything we need. His divine power has given us everything, oh, everything we need for life and godliness. To our knowledge of Him who called us By His own glory and goodness He has given everything for life and godliness To our knowledge of Him who called us By His own glory and goodness His divine power has given us everything, everything we need. His divine power has given us everything, everything we need for life, for life and godliness. To our knowledge of Him who called us by His own. Of him who called us by his own glory and 